How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary and today we're finally doing the campaign review of the new Call of Duty game, Call of Duty World War 2. Uh, it's been, I know I'm a little late behind this uh, review here but you know I finally finished it and I felt like I had some time to let the campaign sink in so I can really kind of give my true thoughts on the campaign here. Uh, this will be a spoiler review so in case you guys really cared about the story for uh, Call of Duty World War 2 you will, uh, you know, don't, you'll be, you've been warned, basically. Uh, so this is a beginning mission of World, of Call of Duty World, World War II. You start on D-Day, much like I think it was in Call of, the first Call of Duty uh, by Infinity Ward. Uh, I think it starts you out with uh, D-Day, so it's kind of reminiscent of like the very first World War II game that Infinity Ward made way, way back in the day. And so basically, you play as... Um, character named Red is his nickname I can't remember the character's name but it's not really that important uh, you play as him and basically it's their experience of going from D-Day pushing through to Germany pushing the front and that's kind of like their experience of, and then the story is kind of like these moments of the war going from you know the beach in France pushing through the uh, Western Front and getting into Germany and so you follow this guy, uh, Red, he has a red tag group of people like Zussman's, one of his, like his buddy that he plays with right here. You can see that's his, uh, Turner. That's on, that's what, uh, they're, uh, t they're what, commander, leader or whatever person. And, uh, and then you got like the anti-hero person, uh, Pearson, who's kind of like the guy who just yells at you, goes like, Oh, you're just terrible at everything you do, aren't you? Like kind of stuff. <laughs> Actually, I think I might die here a couple times. We'll just kind of fast forward through this. So. Um, so yeah, basically, you can saw right there, like, the game starts out, like, really, like, kind of bloody, a little gruesome, and I was just like, kind of surprised, like, wow, this is going to be, like, a, actually, like, a very M-rated game, like, this is going to be kind of gritty and real, and, like, something more than I was expecting when it comes to a Call of Duty campaign, because usually, you know, obviously, they, they, they design these stories that have clear bad guy, clear good guy, and you just kind of play through, and it's just like, eh, it's a fun time, whatever. Now I was kind of hoping for this one to be a little bit more of a gritty, realistic experience of World War II. And I was hoping for this game to be something different. And it definitely starts out like that, because like I said, the intro, I was like, damn, that's a little, that's a graphic. There's, but there, there, that's, a, that's a body, a dismembered body on the ground right there. That's a bit intense, <laughs> you know. And, but then, uh... Yeah, you know, later as the game uh, progresses through, it kind of falls victim to your standard Call of Duty tropes. Um, you know, enemies that kind of just stand out in the open, don't really use cover, like you can see right now. Like these guys just kind of stand out in the open, and like, "Hey, please shoot me," kind of stuff. <laughs> and um, which kind of comes with the Call of Duty. Like I don't really play these games for a challenge. I play this on normal. Uh, just because I don't really play these games for a challenge. If I was gonna play a game for a challenge, I'd play Mass Effect, you know, or uh, Halo. Uh, or any Halo game because the way they upscale their difficulty they actually add more difficult characters where upscaling the difficulty in Call of Duty just means you just die a lot easier and grenades are just constantly flying in so it's not really it's artificially making it difficult where it's just harder for you to survive rather than actually having to use more techniques and strategies to play through the game like you do with say like a Halo or, you know, or an RPG kind of game so, I just played it on normal. Uh, I think I beat it in like two or three play sessions. And so, it probably took me about six hours to play through. So, I think it was like a decent length campaign. It was right there. Uh, but, like, when I said it would fall back to your standard Call of Duty tropes of like saying having, you know, waves and waves of bad guys just running at you, you're not using cover at all. I think you will see it here in a bit in, the, in this gameplay as well. Just kind of like. And you're kind of stent like how many times you've played a Call of Duty game where you're on top of a turret and there's just a, a field of bad guys and you're just I oh, you all need to die kind of stuff. Like it's like in every Call of Duty game ever. Happens in this one as well. So I was that kind of stuff really kinda of let me down. Uh, I did like the espionage espionage mission. Uh, where you kinda of had to at least kinda of use your brain and remember certain things when interact trying to get through the different levels but the thing was though like as long as you didn't hit stand too close to the guard of the door you can just pull up your papers look at okay this is what uh, i need to remember again and the game even highlights certain parts of, like to make sure you remember this this and this right here and then you put it back down you take two steps forward and you walk up to the guys like papers please you know like 
Okay, this doesn't seem suspicious at all that a person is just like standing there going like, Okay, I gotta remember what this looks like. And, um, okay, well, you need my papers now? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> you know? It's like, well, I, you know, and they ask you like a question of your memory. Going like, okay, so are you here for business or are you here for travel kind of thing? And so, you know, even though you just looked at him right in front of the guard, the guard has to ask you that question. Like, obviously, like, it's... You know, they try to make it seem like you have to remember, but you really don't. Because any Call of Duty campaign, you never really have to try. <laughs> and that's kind of the thing about these campaigns. Um, another part I thought was like another total Call of Duty trope is uh, the part where you're on a uh, jeep. You're chasing down is this train that you have to face. And this was, this was the most agree, the most, I guess agree just would be the word, the most obvious trope that they d ever did in Call of Duty where basically... You're following this train full of Germans, all with weapons. And then it's like, you know, these train cars that have like 10 Germans on each one. And you're just on a turret on a Jeep with zero cover. And you're probably about, I don't know, 20 yards away, 50 yards away at absolute most. And it's just like an on the rails part, no pun intended, but when you're trying to shoot down this uh, train. And like obviously like, no one can hit you. It's this is like a total party. You just hold down right trigger and win the game. And it does everything for you, kind of stuff. Uh, it was just like man, really like you have to fall into these tropes. Like I was kind of hoping for more like a more grounded version of the game, but uh, obviously with Call of Duty, every campaign needs to be like a Michael Bay movie where everything needs to be completely over the top, and you just need to be like the most badass soldier ever created of all time. Um, I did kind of find. Uh, like, it was odd, like, after every single mission, like, the in-game characters would compliment you, like, Great job, soldier, you really helped us out there, like, after every single mission. Like, you know, having to give, like, that gratification to the player, and be like, I feel like they, I feel like they need, they, they wrote that in, and be like, make sure after every mission you remind the player that they're doing great, and, you know, give them, give them a nice little back rub, and like, hey, everything's going great, you're doing a great job there, buddy. <laughs> it just felt a little patronizing, really. Um... But uh, I guess, I guess it's a sense with the return of like the classic style of Call of Duty that uh, I was hoping for a little bit more of a more, no pun intended, but grounded version of Call of Duty's story where you're not like the hero of everything and you don't stop the war basically or um, anything like that. Um, there was actually one mission you get to fly a plane, which is actually rather awesome. I really did enjoy that one. Um, though it just kind of felt, though it was a good, I would, I would say it's a good idea. It played all right. Um, but, uh, it just, it didn't really feel like I was in a rush to do anything. I think I had to protect these bombers, but, um, I couldn't tell if I was really protecting them or not. I was just flying around. If I saw a thing, a target over a, a, a plane's head, I went to go shoot it. And you do that. For quite a while, it was, I felt like it was like at least five minutes, ten minutes long of doing this plane mission, um, which ended up. What's which is weird though because you, you the the stuff that you do in the because the real purpose of it is that um, you play as the fighter pilot who cl to help clear out the area for um, Zussman and Pearson, Tucker and all like, and the Red and all that that, that crew. Um, they need to come and do a bombing run, and so you end up playing as a fighter pilot, which is really cool. But the thing is, though, you you don't do anything directly to help out the people that you're playing as throughout the game. It's um, something you have to do before getting to those people to help them out. Which I would like to see, like you having a direct help with um, your characters to be a little more interactive with the actual storytelling of the game. It felt really kind of just like you know, just throw it in there kind of thing, and didn't really fit. Connect super well. It did all right though. Um, but like it's yeah, look at the fire effects and not the best in this game either for sure. But hey, that's what happens when you're playing on like uh, when you're making games on an incredibly old engine that hasn't been updated yet. What are we at? Almost 10 minutes. Wow. Um, so, but the visuals I say in this game are pretty good for a Call of Duty game. They look all right. I um, I did kind of like how they integrated the cutscenes with the actual environments of the game. I'm not quite sure how they did that because uh, obviously you need a whole different set of animations. I wonder if they over overlay like a quick time video of people talking to you while having the actual game engine in the background and you just kind of lined it up perfectly. I could see that happening. Um, 
which was really really interesting thing. I really actually liked the uh, squad gameplay of Call of Duty World War II. I thought they did a great job with, well, not great job, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was a great implementation of the first time I've seen this happen. Uh, but there were a few times where I was going into battle with uh, not the full set of what you would expect to have as a crew. Uh, you know, like they basically set up like you have uh, what Pearson's points out guys for you. Uh, Aello, if I pronounce his name right, like helps drop uh, carpet bombs um, to call out for you know, bombing runs. Uh, Zussman helps you heal. Uh, I believe Tucker gives you ammo, things like that. So that was really cool. But the some, but then other times they remove these parts, these people from your squad. So then you have, uh, you know, you don't have a guy who gives you ammo, or you don't have the guy who gives you heals, or vice, or you know, take, you know, whatever kind of combination you could think of. Which I would think if you're going into battle, the start out of battle at least, uh, that's you would have that full crew at all times. To help you out, because that's kind of like I think at least I would, that's what I would think what would happen. You'd be, you'd be fully prepared for a mission of that of going in the other battle. You need to have people who have certain roles to help you out. Um, so because there, because there were a couple times I'm like, well, there, there's no guy to give ammo. There's no ammo guy like in this mission. What the hell? Uh, I can understand that for gameplay reasons, but logic reasons, I don't really see why that would happen. Um, but yeah, but anyways, though on that one. Uh, but I would like this. I would have just liked to see it be a little more, uh, a little easier to use for sure. Uh, basically, you keep having to run to these people, look at them, and then hit the button to get the, what you need from like heals or whatever. So like say Zussman right here, like you see the low, what uh, is the guy who gives you heals, and say like I know, oh man, I'm running low on health. I need some heals. I need to go over to Zussman click uh, left on the d-pad and then i'd get the heels where i would like to just be able to hit the left d-pad and then have you know have him go like saucerman i need heels and then uh you know he'll heal you up by the way right here this part right here this was way overused in the game these like hand combat wrestling kind of situations every time you just smash x a bunch of times like you know you're not gonna lose as long as you keep tapping x and then you'll have a part where you have to move the joystick over to a circle right here and either press like yeah right here you press y other times you press right trigger i think some other times you press b or x but something like that they overuse this way too many times this had this kind of combat rate happened like what like six seven times something like that and each time they gave you just plenty of time to do it slow motion super easy to do can't fail and um, you know I, I can understand using this like three times maybe but this honestly happened like six times within the game it got to the point where i was like oh it's not i like when i see like uh, you know a point where like someone surprises me around the corner or something like that or goes to tackle you uh you're like oh okay her kind of the point gotta tap x x x x x okay it'll drag the stick over a boom win the mission that's like that's like in real time that's no joke and like i said i can understand using it for a, little, a couple times for cinematic purposes but um it just kind of go it really got overused um oh this part right here is also where they introduce you to the uh, hero actions you can do in the game uh so basically if you see a guy down he's like oh i'm hurt i can't get up you come by you drag him into safety and you go oh thank you saved my life man and so, uh, I think each mission usually has about two or three hero things you can do. But the thing is, uh, there really is no benefit to doing it unless you're just a completionist, crazy person like that. Because you don't really gain any benefits in game while playing when uh, you know helping these people get into cover. Uh, it's mainly just doing it just because I feel like a good guy. You know, I just like I don't like seeing people get hurt. I want to help them. I guess that's the Hufflepuff in me, <laughs> or something. You know. Um, so, you know, I did it out of purpose, just because I was just, that's just who I am, but then there really is no point to doing them, because the AI doesn't really help you out that much in trying to kill bad guys. They may help distract, but that's maybe about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so when it comes to, like, the storytelling, um, I thought it was pretty good. Like, it was definitely an enjoyable campaign. It kept me coming back, kept me entertained and playing it. Um... Pearson, and it's kind of started out just being like a dick to you the whole time, and then you find out it's because of this one time um, something bad happened when he tried being the good guy, and he's like, I can never be the good guy again, or something like that, and so, gave him some reason why he was a dick, rather than just having him just be a dick, 
say i mean obviously it could have just been a lot worse whether you just could have been the asshole and there's no reason given why but you do get to see the like the softer side of pearson to get to so you can sympathize with him and have some more understanding of that character totally understand it um though there is one part in this game i thought was hilarious um when uh your main character red has like a flashback and he it's a him as like a kid and um, his uh, older brother's getting attacked by a wolf, and it's like his arms getting bent. He's like, "Take the shot! Take the shot!" And he's struggling with the bullet kind of thing. And you can tell that Red, as a character, was very hurt, uh, traumatized by this moment because he let his brother down. Spoilers: His brother dies. You find out later in the game for whatever reason they held that information from you. I guess to make it a twist, like, oh, the whole time he's writing these stories to his older brother, but it's just out of like. Respect because he's dead. Whoa. Like, if he showed that he died in the beginning, it would be a lot more impactful for him to understand why uh, this that moment meant so much to Red. Because the whole time you're like, okay, that's a bit traumatic. Yeah, he, but he got back up and started walking around. But he didn't find out till later in the game that he dies. Um, and so that's why that foreshadowing moment was so impactful for uh, your main character. But, like, come on. Like, Guy getting, you know, knocked down, fighting out something, saying, yelling, take the shot, take the shot. And then you're all, okay, well, obviously, this is going to come back up again in the actual story where, you know, your, your main character has to shoot uh, some German guy, probably, about to attack, t attacking your friend, and you save him by doing that. And so that's kind of <laughs> like the stuff that happens in the game. So, like, and obviously, it does happen at the end of the game. Not exactly like that, but then your guy has a flashback back to that moment. And, um, you know, you see a German officer about to shoot Zussman. And so then you take the shot. You kill him, you redeem yourself, and you're in the passing of your brother and things like that. Uh, that felt incredibly cliche and not really warranted, really. Um, and I just felt... So, and then so that was kind of like, I just like, come on, man. Like, this is so obvious foreshadowing. It's absurd. But, you know, it's a Call of Duty game. I can't really expect. I just, you know, like I said, I just kind of hoped for a little bit better, a little bit more. But that's just me. Um, and then, what else? And then, so then, the, for the gameplay itself, um, you definitely, like I said, kind of falls into your standard Call of Duty tropes of just being like the superhero. You know, you can't be beaten kind of person. You do the most outrageous stuff and you just end up winning everything. Damn, I got wrecked right there. <laughs> But, um, oh, there was another thing I wanted to mention about the game. Uh, oh, just like how it's rather anticlimactic for the gameplay to end. Uh, story wise, it kind of builds itself up properly, but the gameplay at the end didn't really feel like it was coming to a, like a pinnacle breaking point, much as the story did. Um, so, that's actually one of the times where I'd say that the storytelling in Call of Duty was actually better than the gameplay itself. Uh, the last mission, you're just kind of just going through uh, these bridges, counting your bad guys like you normally do. There really isn't like some big battle or something you're like, oh my god, I need to overcome this kind of thing. Like remember like in Modern Warfare 3 where you have to kill the bad guy and he's in like a super juggernaut suit, right? Or you're in like a super juggernaut suit so you feel like this is like a crazy last moment kind of gameplay kind of thing. So you felt like this was like a culmination. This is like the end. Where in uh, this game, gameplay wise, you don't really feel the end happening. It just kind of stops. You're like, oh, that's the game right there. And then you have another like five minutes of cutscenes after that to kind of wrap everything up and then you're good to go. And so it's the gameplay storytelling. The gameplay of the storytelling wasn't the best, but the storytelling was actually all right. I thought it was the decent characters. It's that, that the standard Call of Duty tropes like right here. I, how many times you play in Call of Duty where you're out to get on top of a turret and you have to shoot a field, open field of just a sea of bad guys that are just not using cover or really hitting you. And so, it's just like, come on, man, really? Like, this has to happen every Call of Duty. It's, it's, it's just like the Call of Duty tropes that what really got me with this campaign and made me uh, not really enjoy it as much as I would like. Uh, and so, yeah. But, um... Other than that, though, the only person, only character I really cared about was Zussman. So when he got captured, I was like, "Oh no! Like I want to see, I want to help out Zussman. I want to see what happened to him." So they actually did a really good job of making that connection with that character. 
Uh, everybody else I didn't really care about. Uh, they're all mainly literally just tools for me in battle for, you know, getting more ammo, getting, um, you know, uh, drops and pointing out bad guys and things like that. But um, with the Zussman character, I think they did a great job of, you know, making you actually care for them. So it was good. Um, but overall, um, like I would say it's above average when it comes to this game. Um like I definitely wouldn't put it above Black Ops One. Black Ops One, that was that was a great Call of Duty game. The story in that one was great. Uh, Modern Warfare Two, I thought it was also a great story. Same thing with Call of Duty Four, great storytelling in that one as well. But uh, anyways, guys, I think overall I'd probably give it above average, like seven out of ten, B score, B minus kind of thing. Uh, so it wasn't bad, but it just like I just. It fell victim to the Call of Duty tropes, and I was just kind of wishing for a little bit more grounded story, less over-the-top action, and uh, a little more, like, realism. Something that actually made you feel something rather than just being, boss man, that blows up everything kind of stuff. Um, but if you guys have played this campaign, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If you enjoy these kind of review videos, I will try to do more of them. Uh, let me know by tapping that like button. Let me know you want to see more content like this. Subscribe for more awesome stuff that we have on this channel that almost daily now. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And we'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.